Hello, and welcome to a brief introduction on position, velocity, and acceleration functions. So we are going to start with a very simple velocity function. Our function is going to be v of t equals 6. So let's measure uh, our time in seconds. Let's just draw our graph for, say, you know, maybe go out to 4 seconds. And our units for our velocity, let's say they're in meters per. So that is what the graph of v of t equals 6 looks like. So we have some sort of a, a particle or a car or a pretty fast person or and anything that we can imagine that's moving and the object or thing or person is moving at a constant speed of 6 uh, meters per second. And remember, uh, velocity here is a is a vector quantity. So if v of t, if it's always 6, um, our object our, or our person or whatever, it's moving in sort of uh, the positive direction. If the velocity was negative, then the person or object would stop and start moving in uh, the opposite direction, whatever we're calling sort of the negative direction. But I just want to start off with a very simple uh, velocity function here. So we have a we have an object moving in one, we're just going to assume it's in a straight line, and every second that goes by uh, that object uh, moves another six meters. Great! So now let's let's think about this graph and think about some some very simple questions that we could ask. So we could ask something like uh, how far did the object travel in four seconds? So this is not a very deep or perplexing uh, math problem here. So every second that goes by, the object is going to be moving six meters. The velocity is six meters per second. So in four seconds, the object is going to have traveled 24 meters. So we could do some simple dimensional analysis here. We could think about this as uh, we've got the object is traveling at 6 meters per second, and it travels for 4 seconds. I multiply those two quantities together, the units of seconds cancel. 6 times 4 is 24. We're left with the units of meters, 24 meters. Now, the very important thing here is that we want to see where that 24 meters is located on the graph. Like geometrically, where can we see that represented in this graph? Well, we can see it sort of in this area. If I look at this region here, over f four seconds, at six meters per second, we could take the area of this rectangle. So the, the area of that rectangle is sort of the geometric representation of how much distance that our object is uh, traveling over the four second interval. So one sort of uh, trick that I find very useful when I'm thinking about calculus is that if I look at any sort of graph and I look at the units that are representing sort of my y values and the units that are representing sort of my x values, if you multiply those units together, so in this case, if I multiply meters per second times seconds, uh, I wind up with just meters. Sort of multiplying the, those units together gives me the units that are going to represent uh, the, the area sort of under the graph and above or below uh, the x-axis, or, or in this case, the t-axis. So we have sort of a way, a, a notation uh, of how we can denote this in, in calculus. We can use the integral sign. So if I were to write this. So what, what this is, this big curly scripted s, that's the integral sign. So this says that this is the integral from 0 to 4 of our velocity function uh, with respect to time. So 0 is the starting value and 4 is the ending value. v of t is our function 
So this is sort of encoding in mathematical speak that we're going to look for the area under the curve, bound, the area bound by the curve, in this case the just the line v of t equals x, the x-axis, or in this case the t-axis, and a vertical line for the starting point, in this case 0 seconds, and a vertical line for the ending point, in this case 4 seconds. So we're going to find that area. This is sort of like the calculus way of encoding that. And in this case, this equals 24 meters. Great. So we've, we've sort of looked at a simple example of how to do an integral. Now, uh, one really nice thing is that it's very easy to do integrals on the calculator. So here I have gone ahead and graphed uh, the function y equals 6. That represents our v of t equals 6 there. Boom. So I can have the calculator find the area under the curve above the x-axis and bound by any two uh, particular vertical lines that I want. If I go into second trace, I can choose right down there, number 7, so that's the integral of f of x uh, dx. I mean, in, in my case, I want the integral of v of t dt. It's just that everything in the calculator is used in terms of, of uh, x and y, or x and f of x. Uh, but no matter. Okay, so I'm going to choose option 7. And lower limit, that's sort of my starting value. I pick 0. And the upper limit, I'm going to pick 4. And the calculator is going to shade in and compute that area. It tells me right there that the area is 24. And I've sort of tried to contextualize that in this case, that uh, like in terms of like what that area sort of represents. So this is our first example of, of thinking about what an integral is and integral uh, notation. Now remember, uh, we also have talked about uh, derivatives and the derivative uh, function. So I'm going to sort of erase all of this stuff here and and change gears for a second. But I, I want to keep the uh, I want to keep that graph right there. This is just going to take me a moment. Okay. So now remember we also talked about the derivative function, which tells me. Uh, the instantaneous rate of change at any point. So uh, if I wanted to think about what the derivative is of this function, I would look like anywhere on the function, and I would think, well, if I'm standing anywhere on this function, what is the slope at that moment? But this function's a horizontal line, so anywhere I'm standing on this function, the slope of the function is zero. So the derivative of the velocity function, I'll call v prime of t, that's just going to be 0. Because everywhere I'm standing on the function, the slope is 0. Now, let's think about what the units would be of, of this function, for, of this uh, derivative function. So this is the derivative of uh, the velocity function. Well. So another handy trick I've got with the units is just think about, well, a derivative uh, is outputting the slope. It's a function that tells you what the slope is. So if I was to look at this graph, the slope would be y units, meters per second, divided by x units, because slope is change in y over change in x. So in the numerator, if I computed any uh, slope here at a particular instant, the numerator would have the y units, the meters per second, the denominator would have the x units. So meters per second per second, that's really just meters per second squared. So the, the derivative of the velocity function is just a constant 0, 0 meters per second squared. But wait a minute, meters per second squared, that's, that's the, uh, the units for acceleration. So the derivative of the velocity function that's really just the acceleration function. The derivative of the velocity, that's the acceleration. The acceleration function. So really, v, v prime of t, v prime of t here, is actually the acceleration function. It's actually a of t. So I'm sort of reasoning out 
I'm thinking about like what the derivative of velocity, what that would be telling me. That'd be telling me the slope, the instantaneous rate of change of the velocity at any given instant. But like how the velocity is changing per unit time, like that is what acceleration is. So, so v prime of t, the derivative of velocity, is acceleration. Great. So we've sort of reasoned this out using a like a nice simple example. But what happens if we go to a slightly more complex example? Like let's take our velocity function uh, to be maybe something like uh, t squared minus four t. So what if our velocity function looked like this? Uh, this will at zero seconds, this will be zero. This will be zero again at four seconds. This is going to be a parabola. Uh, where's the vertex here? Two comma negative four function is going to look something like that. So there's there's my velocity function. That should be a parabola. It's just my drawing is still terrible with the pen. I'm still acclimating to it. But see see now it's a little bit trickier if I say if I wanted to figure out something like you know the distance traveled over the first four seconds because now that that's still going to be represented as the area under uh, the curve bound by the curve and the t-axis and my starting point and my ending point but now this area is no longer just a rectangle so if I, I'm going to shade this in here so this this area that I'm shading the area of that of that curved region that's going to represent uh, the distance traveled over four, the distance that the object travels over four seconds. And, and look at this, this, this area is underneath the t-axis. Notice all of these velocity values here, everywhere that you're on the velocity curve from zero to four seconds. The velocities are negative, so that means this object is moving sort of in whatever we're dictating the negative direction to be. So in the first example, I guess if we're calling the positive direction the right, uh, so the object would be moving left here. So this this area is going to is going to be the distance that the object is going to travel over uh, the four second interval in the negative direction. So I'm not going to get into exactly how we compute that area. I mean, you'll talk about some of those uh, pedantic details in calculus, but it's it's just important that we understand that if I wrote this down. I wrote the integral from 0 to 4 of t squared minus 4t dt, that that represents, since this is the velocity function, since I'm thinking of my units here for uh, the y values are meters per second, for the x values, or the t values here, seconds. So if I, if I multiply those units, I get meters. That's the units for the area under the curve here. So that this is representing over the four seconds how far the object is traveling. And I'm looking at the graph, and that's going to be a, a negative, a negative value. So uh, you know, when you when you annotate this, you can either write out the function here, like t squared minus four t, or you could just you could just name what the function is. You could you could just put in here v of t. That's six and one half dozen the other. That doesn't matter. So we're not going to get into like exactly how you calculate that, but we can we can grab our calculator most certainly and uh, and calculate that. Let's grab the calculator back. So we can type in that function. So t squared uh, minus four t or x squared minus four x. I guess in this example, whatever. Um, I'm just going to do a. Oh, and I want to get a good window. So maybe like zero to six and then maybe uh negative five to fifteen, sixteen, something like that. Okay, great. So now if I go into the uh second uh trace into the calc menu and I pick option seven, lower limit four, upper limit lower limit zero, upper limit four, boom. So the calculator is telling me that this area is negative 10.6 uh, repeating. So what that is telling me is that that's telling me over the first, over the four seconds here, the object is traveling 10.667 meters in the in the negative direction. 
awesome. So now one thing you'll notice is once you do this on the calculator, it's sort of annoying is that the, the shading stays there. If I want that shading to go away, if I just go over to the equal sign and y equals, hit enter, and then hit enter again, the calculator will graph fresh and get rid of the get rid of the shading. So now if if I were to do like another integral here, like if I did I'm gonna do the integral from zero to five. Now now notice how that is still negative eight uh, point three repeating. Now that should make sense because what's going on is that the object is moving to the left uh, this much, like this area much, the negative 10.667 meters, and then it's going to, when the, at four seconds, the object is stopped, because the velocity is zero at four seconds, that means the object is just momentarily at rest, and then when the velocities are positive, that means the object is going to move in the other direction, and the amount that it moves in the other direction is encapsulated by this area right here, so it's going to be a little bit positive, offsetting a little bit of the distance traveled to the left. It's going to move back to the right a little bit. But then it, notice it, it ends at 8 and a third meters uh, in the negative direction still. That's sort of representing the net, uh, the net change, the net change in position. So if you wanted to just find the total position traveled, like the total, I'm sorry, the total distance traveled, then you could think of like what's the area under the curve here, the absolute value of that, add that to this area here. And that would give you the total distance traveled. But this negative 8.333, that's just giving you sort of the displacement, like how far away you are from where you started. So you got to be careful because things like velocity are, are vector quantities. So it's really tricky sometimes when you're, when you're keeping track of like the notion of displacement, like how far did you end from where you started, versus like the total amount of distance that you traveled. Those are, displacement and distance are also, are, are often different. Because distance traveled, you're normally just thinking of that as like a scalar quantity, whereas displacement, you're thinking of that almost like a vector quantity, as, as a vector quantity. Great. And then remember, we can connect this all back to also thinking about uh, rates of change, and remember we can do that on the calculator now too. So if I wanted to know, like, if I wanted to know what's the acceleration of this particle uh, at at five seconds, so if I wanted to know what's v prime of five, so what what would that be telling me? That would be telling me the the instantaneous uh, acceleration at t equals 5 seconds. So v prime of 5, that's telling me what's the slope of the velocity curve at 5 seconds. And the slope, that's the the instantaneous rate of change, I rock, sometimes people will, will, will call it for short. Remember, what would the units be on the slope here? They'd be the y units divided by the x units. You're thinking slope, you're thinking rise over run. So it'd be, it'd be meters per second per second. So the, the units here are going to be meters per second squared. And again, we could actually, that's a computation we could do. We could actually compute the derivative of the velocity function. We know how to compute the limit definition of the derivative now. So we could, we could work that out. It would take a little, a little bit of math. But we could also grab our calc. And I'm just going to reset because I don't want the, yeah, get rid of the shade in there for a second. Because if I do second trace, and I pick uh, dy dx, differential change in y, or the differential change in x. So this is going to be aka the instantaneous slope at any given moment. So I can just type in an x value here, or um, a t value, of 5. Boom, dy dx equals 6. That means that at 5 seconds, that's telling me what the acceleration is. That at 5 seconds, the slope of the curve right there, so see where that marker is? So the slope right there, the slope is 6. That the acceleration at 5 seconds is 6 meters per second squared. So I know this is just, this is a lot of new, this is calculator skills, this is connecting a lot of new ideas to geometry. Uh, your comfort level with these ideas is going to be totally 
dependent, you know, probably on how much physics you've studied to this point. So I know this is going to be tough, uh, but we're going to do awesome with this, and you know, we're going to finish the year strong. And I can't wait to talk about all these ideas in class. So good luck.